Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another College Football 25 video and today I'm going to be going over the easiest ways to recruit in CFB 25. Before we get into this video, as always, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, follow me down below on Twitter and TikTok, and if you haven't already, check out Underdog. My code does get you up to $250 on your first deposit. Before we do get into this, I do want to preface this by saying recruiting does vary based on the prestige of program you have. All the tips that I'm going to give you now will still apply, and that's why I'm going to make a very bulk video in the sense of the best strategies and practices for recruiting, because you have to keep in mind that a bigger program will get players a lot easier, but these practices will apply to every program. You just may have to vary your approach on them based on which program and prestige you do choose. Let's start from ground up. So you pick your coach, head coach, coordinator, whatever it be, create new, right? Or you could choose a coach, but for the purpose of this, we're creating new and you have to start by picking your arch archetype. First, you're going to go ahead and pick your coach, current or new. I prefer new in this sense because I do want to go all out on recruiting. Picking a current coach may not have the exact packages that you do want. So create new. And here you see the three archetypes that you can choose for coach. Obviously, go recruiting. If you don't know the ins and outs of archetypes, make sure to check out my last video. I did make a video breaking down the best ones to choose. I will then be making one where I do go more in depth on which packages within these archetypes to choose, but that'll come later down the line. So go ahead and choose recruiting. This is the all-in package, coaching package for recruiting. Now, right here, this does play a big part. So if you see pipeline, since you are creating a new coach, you can choose your pipeline. This is something that's going to be very varied. It's going to change season from season. One year, the five-star QB may be from a pipeline that you have, and you'll have a big advantage on getting them. The next season, he may be from New York, right? And your Alabama pipeline is not helping as much. You can do your own research in terms of pipelines where specific players come out of. This will really be entirely up to you. I'd probably recommend choosing a place that makes sense. Maybe don't pipeline Big Apple as not the greatest players always come from there. I'd probably stay somewhere in a pipeline that kind of applies to one of the top programs. So my best recommendation is go into a program that you like, like an Alabama, a Georgia, an LSU, and look at their coaching pipelines and try to emulate that. Okay, so now let's get into the recruiting guide. So first things first on your weekly to-do list, I cannot stress this enough. Every week, the first thing you must do is open up your recruiting board, your scouting prospect board every single week. More importantly than playing the games, get that open. This is a great thing to do on your off time when you have some time to kill. If you don't, make some time. If you miss this, your, your whole entire dynasty is going to fall apart. So first thing you want to do, especially week one, is set up recruiting board and scout prospects. This really lays out the framework for the rest of the dynasty. The rest of the season is week one. So the first, first thing you want to do absolutely is go ahead and scout. Now, keep in mind, like I said, hours will vary. If you're a one-star program, you won't have a thousand hours. If you're a two-star, three-star, four-star, five-star, that does vary. So... Again, keep these practices in mind. So the first thing you want to do when you open up the recruit list is go to recommended and look at these players first, in my opinion. It's very simple. I think for 90% of people, recommend is the way to go. There will be people who are very, very good, very strategic and know how to go through this. I do recommend as the season goes on or after you get through your recommended list, you can then go for like the diamond in the roughs, go through and see other players. But recommended will, will secure 90% of what you need. Primarily because there's a big game that has that, that involved with pipelines, locations, generic interest. For instance, this guy Gatto, he's a four-star right end. You see at the bottom of the list, I already have a head start over other schools. Having a head start plus using the same tools that everyone else has, such as send the house, etc., means you're probably going to keep that lead outside of a bad visit or someone else having some extreme catch-up. But for the most part, having this lead is huge. Even for this guy right here, five-star that I'm starting to lead with, these are guys you definitely want to get in your board because these are pretty much what you call gimme recruits. Like they're going to be very easy for you to finish up on. And over here, you can see the pipeline I was referencing. This is a five-star pipeline influence. So this guy, Gatto, he is a guy from Lake Charles, Louisiana, that I can go ahead and pretty much have a great chance of getting because he's in my pipeline. But if you if you do this and you go to this where there's no pipeline interest, I'm not a top four school. I happen to be fifth in this one, but you'll see 10th, 10th. And the worst part is as I recruit, I'm not getting that bonus. I'm not getting those interests. I'm not getting things that work in my favor. So there will be a team that does have that. And that's where it's going to get really tough. And you do not want to go ahead and inefficiently use your points. So now that we're back at the full recommended screen here, this is where I would start. So you see here, as you scroll down first, first, fourth, first, first, fifth, fifth, third, et cetera, and they're in the order of need. So there's two ways to do this. You can either sort by position, which is something I like to do, 
primarily because I want to see what I really, really want to lock out my top of the board. And then I go back and sort the recommended. So that's what I would recommend. Do a bulk search and do the individual positions you know you need. Like you need a quarterback and a wide receiver and you want to do a deeper dive. And at which point you can start putting guys on your board by clicking A. You can go right here. You can add all these if you like. Obviously, don't add them all. Do a little bit more in-depth search for this purpose of the video. I'm going to give you guys a few right here. But definitely see what you need. For instance, this is a bunch of ends right here. There's four right ends on the top. This will become a problem in terms of deal breakers. If someone has playing time and you're recruiting a bunch, they're not going to want to compete with them. If you're doing visits and you're doing them at the same time, they're not going to want to compete. So make sure you are being vigilant about what you're adding to your board. But for the purpose of this video, make sure to go ahead, add the players in your recommended list that you think are worthwhile. And then, of course, after that, go through and break down by QB, by running back, and just check it out here. You can always sort by five-star, like I said. But if you see here, like this five-star is a two. I do happen to have the lead on him, which is great. But you may end up going to a position where you sort by five-star and you have absolutely no chance. One important thing to note is that players do have deal breakers, which is going to pretty much make or break any recruiting process. If you're a great team, deal breakers aren't as relevant in the sense that you're probably going to hit a lot of them. If you're a lower overall team, this is going to make or break pretty much your entire recruiting strategy. As you see on the bottom, Gato has a deal breaker for proximity to home. You need a B minus and LSU has a A plus in terms of it being in Louisiana. Now, obviously deal breaker proximity to home is one of the things you can't change. You either have it or you don't. So let's say you were in New York. It may just be an auto lockout. You're locked out of this player. If you scroll on down though, right here, pro potential. CJ Towns has a B minus pro potential, which means you have to be a pretty solid program. If you were a one, two, maybe even three star program, you may not hit his needs and therefore you're locked out. And if you keep on going down, you'll see there's plenty. There's brand exposure, there's pro potential. One of the ones that I really noticed in season is championship contender, coach stability, and playing, uh, playing style. So playing style is important. For instance, I had Emory Jones on LSU, the tackle. I was passing the ball 80 times a game, trying to learn the pass mechanics, and I wasn't running the ball slowly he requested basically a transfer he had marked it as it was super likely he was in a transfer because i'm not running the ball this also applies to recruits if you're trying to recruit some run mauling tackles or guards or centers or you're trying to recruit some halfbacks and you're only passing the ball they're not going to want to play for your school and you could go from leading a in a recruit like being the one to being locked out as you hit you fall out of their deal breaker coaching stability plays a role because if you're on a one-year deal or you're near the end of your deal i did see coaching stability drop and championship contender, this is another variable one such as playing style. You start losing some games, your championship contender can go from an A, a B, all the way down to like a C, or it can go up. So you can be locked out of players and then come on up, or you can stay around the range. So definitely keep that in mind as you do go through the recruiting process. I want you went through and added the guys from your recommended list, a few key positions you want, and potentially a few guys you're willing to fight for. You can go ahead over here. Like I said, it's fine to add people you want to fight for, but keep in mind, this is about classes of 10 to 35 people right like you're looking at doing the overall class so let's say you put all your resource towards fighting for 15 and you only get like two of those fights you go through you have a really weak class so you really want to lock in the gimmies knock those guys out make sure you're putting a lot of your sources towards the guys you know you can get and then coming back and allocating what's left to the guys you're willing to fight for unless you feel strong like it's an 100 speed qb but again just be very vigilant while using your points so right here you see it's week one. You can go in. You can click on right end, QB, right end, left guard. You see them here. There is a way to sort them. You can sort by position if it makes it easier for you. I do find that sometimes using this bulk list can get a little confusing. So sometimes I like to go through uh, positions at least early on. And then when I'm down here, you can go into like top five, etc. So let's start with one position. And this is going to go across all of them. So let's go with Malden, the QB. We currently have the lead on him. And for a guy that you want to you want to recruit at all, make sure you offer them a scholarship right away. Get that interest going right off the rip. You don't want to fall behind an interest, and scholarship's the easiest thing to offer. Of course, if it is a guy that you're not as sure you want to offer or you want to see first, you can go ahead and scout them, and you can, it costs 10 hours. Now, for a program like LSU, that's fine. I have plenty of hours. It does add up. It does add up even for me. So imagine a program that only has 300 hours. So for a program that's lower, I'd recommend you scout like this in the sense you click it one time. Okay, 79 speed. Let's say you were looking for a running quarterback. You can cut him out the list right there. Or you can use these brackets right here. So those yellow throw power brackets show he's probably going to be like high 80, maybe low 90 if he's lucky. And that's a way for you to kind of get a sense of where he's at without having to through it. But if you do go all the way through, you can get gems. So if you click through all the way, you can sometimes get a green gem or a red gem. So right here, you see, I did get a red gem on Manny Castro. I want to just demonstrate that real quick. Red gem pretty much puts them on the lower end of their overall. And a green gem puts them on the higher end. So let's say you're a five-star that's a red gem. So let's say Molden was a red gem. He'd probably be like more of a bus five-star, closer to a four-star. If he was a green gem, he'd be like an elite five-star. If he's no gem, he kind of just falls in line with 
his position averages, right? So keep that in mind. That is important. It doesn't mean don't recruit red gems. It just means be vigilant of don't be putting all your resources and fighting for a five-star red gem because he's really a four-star. You can let other people duke it out if they want to. Really be focusing on those green gems and the regulars. Although the four, the red star, the red gem guys could be very useful in terms of guys who fall through the cracks. You may see like a five-star center that's a red gem and everyone starts avoiding him because it's a red gem, but it's still going to be like a high four-star, low five-star type center. It's still useful as depth or as a starter on the line, of course, so I'd still go for it. So we have Molden scouted. We offered him a scholarship. Whether or not he's the greatest player, you could always go ahead and just remove him from your board if you don't want him by holding Y. But at this point, you want to assess your hours. We have 1065 out of 1125. Still plenty more. And being that it's week one, you want to go ahead and just keep going through and scouting players. Let's check out CJ Towns. We click through. He's a red gem. I'll keep him there for now, but I find another left guard that I think is worth my time. Or if his interest isn't really aligning, I am still in first for him. So it's not the end of the world, but it's not someone I'm going to be actively engaging with the entire time. We go through to Mike Funches. Keep clicking through. He's a regular. We go through Nailer. There we go. Green gem right end i definitely want to look into him a little bit more 84 speed 82 power move at which point offer the scholarship the only guys that i probably offer it offer up without too much thinking is, is if you're a lower program if you're a lower program you may just have to throw some scholarships just darts on the wall if you're a bigger program you can definitely scout everyone you like but at this point in this week all you want to do is just keep going through and just scouting away scouting away remember these hours do reset every week although they will vary depending on the time of the season you're out so definitely spend the first week strictly scouting and offering scholarships and making sure to use every single point you have you do not want to leave any on the table after we advance past that first week which is really the offer scouting week you now can actually go ahead and do action so there's search social media dm the player contact friends and family and send the house for now pitch does become available once you move into the top five schools if you look at the top you see the bar top eight five and three that kind of dictates the progression that you make through the recruiting process and as well as sway which will become available at top five so in the meantime for the next few weeks you really want to be looking at this and as you see now so to give you an example i just made the offer now after the week so everyone's ahead of me so that's why it's important to really drop that offer in week one because now they have a slight advantage on this week although i'll probably gain it back with this recruiting offer but that goes to show you that how you could just fall behind quickly by missing a week or missing in advance. So once you have that in, you do want to go ahead and add it. So this is a guy, Gatto, four star. I definitely want him. I'm going to send the house. That's 50. Again, with the smaller program, be careful because you can't just be sending 50 to everyone. Now, 50 is the max you can do unless you have a coaching package. There is a coaching package that allows you to go ahead and add an extra 10 on a guy. As you see there, and get you at 60, but you can't go any further than that. So that package is variable. Again, that's why it's important to go recruiter. You definitely want to go ahead and grab some of these packages to make it easier to recruit. So now once you've established that, keep in mind that recruiting is automatic in the sense that if I put DM the player and send the house on Gatto, it will stay like this every single week until he doesn't commit, he does commit, or you take it off. So pretty much your hours are locked up, which is good and bad. I say it's good because that means that if you do miss in advance, or you want to be simple or like you're in that waiting period of week three to five where the where it's just kind of like advancing you can just leave it on them now it's problematic in the sense that if you want to go do another player you got to go take it off or if you forget you are just wasting hours you may not know where they're allocated so it's important to go through your board after every week you advance you will get a recruiting update which basically shows you what has changed during that week so for instance gato has reached his top eight schools as well as the rest of the people on my board here so this is important to monitor it'll either tell you they've committed they went another way they've locked you out based on deal breakers or they're just making progress top eight just like before still can't go ahead and make the hard pitch although you wouldn't be ready to get anyways back in check out the board as you see after making the offer and tossing on there the 60 points you send the house and dm the player we have gotten quite the lead here as we do narrow out the top five this will shrink but we do have a lead in this guy and from here on out like i said this is where you want to go through and just kind of check it out so as you see on the right Coaching stability and prestige is now blocked. And in my face camp, proximity to home is now opened up. So that is one motivation that we have discovered. You do want to find all three to start maximizing to make your true, true pitch to the player. But this is important. And in this week, as we keep going on, now you want to go through your board every time, go on down and just check each player out. For the sake of this video, I'm doing one player because I feel like it's probably going to be confusing to do a lot of players, but the same principle applies. You set up your motivations, you set up your recruiting actions, you set up everything, and you just keep going through as we go. So Gatto has officially reached his top five. Now I'm turning off the webcam here so you guys can go ahead and see the motivations here on the right. So as you see, proximity to home is green, conference prestige is green. So we still need to know one more, although 
here's where this tip comes in handy. So if you go to add action and go to hard sell, to add this, you do have to remove your active action. So make sure to do that to see it, but you can remove both these by holding Y. And then you go to you go down to hard sell, at which point you can go ahead and hard sell the player. Now, what's important here is that you don't have three activated. So if you go on through, you can see which ones they highlight. The tip you can do here is kind of just play like process of elimination. See the two green that highlight. So, so far we're going through, none have highlighted both yet. And here we go, here's the first one. So proximity to home and conference prestige and championship contender. So that's one. Now, if none other have those two highlighted, you pretty much know it's that one. So this one has two, but it's playing style is red. So that's also wrong. This one has two, but it's coach prestige is red. So that one's also wrong. This is all unknowns. This isn't two greens. That's not two greens. So it's quite obvious. The one that we have to go with is going to be this one right here. Champion contender will be the last one. So it's pretty much basic math. And the reason this is important because a lot of other schools and a lot of other users may say, I'm going to wait. That's super risky until I know. But if you can just do process of elimination, you could pretty much start a week or so early on other universities, other schools by just going ahead and marking it like this. Cause it's very clear. SEC conference spotlight is the one he's going to want. Of course, if you're a lower program, you may not be able to flex that ability because remember on the right, the grades do matter. So for instance, if his motivation was playing style and academic prestige, and you're going to go ahead and use those as his green ones, you do. I only have a C in both of those. So it's not going to be that impactful. So keep that in mind as well. Doing the pitch helps when you have all A's, but if you were a worse school, it's not going to work as well because you may have F's, C's, and D's there, in which case it may be hard for you to ever hard sell. You may want to soft sell. You may want to just move to the regular actions for that sense because you may not be able to pitch them. If you do go down to sway and you click on it, you can sway them for something that goes in your direction. So for instance, you can go ahead and pick uh, ideal motivation package that works for this guy based on what you want. So let's say you have an A campus lifestyle, A playing time, and A pro, pro potential. You can actually pick that package and go ahead and use that. It's not going to be as impactful as a hard sell, but this will be the motivations for this player for your specific team. So now that we added the hard sell, you can also go ahead and schedule a visit. You can schedule a visit as well as fill out these points. So in the meantime, we have conference spotlight as the 40. We can go ahead and add DM the player for 10. And we could add social media that way we get at least 55 there. So in terms of scheduling a visit, the things you want to focus on here is really the complimentary visits, the competitive visits, and the win. So the win bonus is how much you'll gain if you were to beat this opponent while your recruits there. The complimentary visit is if you do complimentary actions during this week. For instance, you bring a quarterback and a wide receiver in for the same visit. Two high school kids, they want to play together. That's quarterback and wide receiver. They're going to like the fact that they have him thrown to him and him catching the ball from him. So that's important for complimentary visits. What you do want to avoid is competitive visits. So let's say there's five right ends on your on your scouting board. Make sure to separate them. If you put them during the same week, they're going to have a competitive visit downgrade because they're essentially competing for a starting spot. So make sure you avoid that. My biggest advice here is know yourself. Know your skill level. If you're top in the league right now, you're a super competitive user, you can go ahead and schedule your recruits for Alabama, fully expecting to win. And know that if you lose, it's not the end of the world. But if you're not a great user... And let's say you want to knock all your players on UCLA this week, or you want to do it against uh, USA here, know that you will take a big bonus, a big negative bonus if you lose. So do not just be throwing your recruits on bad weeks, because quite honestly, it's not going to give you a big bump. But if you do lose, it is a huge loss in the recruiting interest process right there. So definitely don't do that. If you're in between, you could always toss them on a buy. You're not going to get a huge boost. You're not going to lose anything. It's kind of like a safe bet. You can do that for a big lead, or if you're not that great of a user and you don't know if you're going to win, but definitely be, make sure, be making sure to schedule your recruiting visits. These are very important. They do cost hours, but it is important to note they don't come from your weekly hours. So it will come from your hours on top, but it won't impact your 60 cap. So know that you can do it without having to sacrifice any of your active actions. So Gatto has reached his top three schools. Like I said before, you kind of want to keep monitoring this every week, although your pitch might not change. Like I'm keeping conference pilot, I'm keeping DM player, I'm keeping social media, schedule visits already taken care of. Although you may not be changing, you want to check it every week because things can change. So the Texas Longhorns could have made some big push, could have gotten ahead. And in which case you may need to change your whole strategy. If the visit wasn't scheduled yet, maybe you want to put them on Alabama versus the bye week. You may want to change some stuff up. That is where it becomes important, but we have a clear and obvious lead. And in this case, stick to the course. The only thing you do got to be checking out for is just making sure that you're staying ahead of the playing styles. And you're staying ahead of the motivations. And I say that because, for instance, as LSU, I was passing the ball a lot. And my playing style for running the ball dropped significantly. So let's say you were recruiting a run-blocking lineman or you're recruiting like a halfback. And their playing style is obviously running the ball, mauling in the run. I had an F 
almost near the end of the season, like a C to an F on playing style for running the ball. So know that playing style may not apply to this player. So in terms of you being top three or him having a deal breaker of playing style, you have to be monitoring that. So either A, have a well-rounded game or A, try to cater how you're playing to some of these deal breakers, which is super important. You can see their deal breaker over on their recruiting page. Oh, Gato, we can basically just keep on going through. We can keep advancing. We have everything set up. At this point, you're kind of on, I want to say, cruise control with this player, but other players you may not be. So that's why it's important to come back every week and check change it up and something i could i my best advice is know when to when to throw the hat once i throw the towel in right know when to stop there's been a few times where i was like neck and neck and i felt confident and then one week advances i'm behind a whole quarter a whole quarter bar behind them Just don't waste your hours there those are valuable hours if you're sending the house bring those points back in go on down know that for instance say uh castro it's so obvious we're not making it you go here you pull your points out if i had points on him funches same thing you pull it out there you see nailer we're clearly in the lead. You can even kind of maybe dial it back. I don't recommend dialing it back too much, primarily because you can still lose it. But you have a safe, you have a safe assumed lead here. Instead of maybe doing send the house, you can switch it to like DM the player, go slow, maybe do a bye week recruit here, uh, keep it cheaper on the DM the player portion. So that's what I would recommend. No one to give up and also no one to go through. So a good point throughout the middle of the season is to go back to your prospect list and see what else is available. First, of course, always go through your recommended, scroll down, see what's here. But you can always now at this point go to all. You can go to all and just store it by stars and just go down and just kind of see what is what the interest is looking like. If you see guys that are barely being recruited, if you see bars like this, like Alabama only has a quarter there. Although everyone else is pretty far behind, it's not unreasonable to come back in into this race. And this is a good time to now start to A, reallocate your uh, hours or just kind of see what slipped through the cracks. Obviously, five stars and top tier four stars probably didn't slip through in an online dynasty and an offline possibly. But this is a good week to keep reallocating. And again, I cannot stress enough. Every single week, go through and check this board out. I spent hours yesterday. Strictly, you don't have to play the game. Just doing the board takes a long time. Reallocating the board, going through it again. And as you go to the end over here, you can kind of see where the top classes are falling out. So right now, Miami is the one a lot of five stars haven't exactly recruited yet or are committed yet. So in this instance, you may not see that yet, but as you go through, you'll kind of see where your class stacks up as you're going on through. So this is important to monitor. You can kind of see where other people stand and this can give you a good gauge on where you're at. Now, one thing you do want to keep note is, is make sure that you are recruiting pretty well-rounded. Uh, you can kind of see here, like the top schools don't exactly recruit a bunch of two or one stars, but you really want to make sure you're doing a nice, even mix of five, four, and three. Some people may just put all the five stars on their board, end up with one and have a weak class. Make sure you're doing a few fives a good amount of fours and quite a few th threes because threes are still going to be your backups. Those are going to be your sophomore juniors that come in and finally start on your team or get a role on your team. These are going to be like the long-term guys. So always look at it that way that there's like the guys who are going to be immediate starters, guys who are going to be like sophomore, junior, or even senior starters. You definitely want to keep that in mind while going through the recruiting process. And right there, as we were saying, as you advance through the weeks, you eventually will get a commitment from these players just like this in the week advance screen. So this is how it, this is what it looks like. We got God of the four star. It was pretty simple. Some will be harder, some will be less. But again, the purpose of this video was to kind of go through and show you the intricacies of how to recruit a player, right? I, I didn't want to go through and recruit a whole entire class because that's just going to be a lot of information. It's going to be so variable. You kind of have to understand the variability yourself in that aspect of like, you're losing this race, you're winning this race. You're a one-star program. You're a five-star program. I may make a video going over if you were a five versus a one type, so you kind of understand the other ways to approach it. But for the most part, this does kind of show you how to set up a player, and you can kind of follow these practices along to each and every other player. And of course, some players can recruit and commit early. They can commit right away. They can commit halfway through. Some may not commit all the way to the end. As you see here, we got the verbal commit. You see it there. Can they flip later on based on deal breakers or other stuff? Yes. It's not exactly the most likely thing, but it is possible. You can remove the guys you signed elsewhere while you keep your board available. You'll start to see who's signing to your squad. You can kind of get an idea for how your class is filling out and keep on going through the process. But that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. I know this is a very in-depth process and there's a lot of questions. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, my DMs are always open. I'll answer things over there. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.